Jen. We're all already talking. Hello, welcome everyone to the ELCS post game lobby where I'm shocked. <laughs> That's I just got really awkward that I just read that. I'm shocked, guys. <laughs> and I'm joined by, more importantly, Fanatics Weepo and ex Fanatics now Mad Lions, Aranea. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Congratulations, Weepo. Great Thank stuff. You. Uh, what did it come down to from your perspective? It was the match of the week, it was a pretty hyped one. Uh, I think uh, the difference in mid lane was pretty substantial. I feel well, like was we. Was it the difference in mid lane or was it the camping of the mid lane by Roxa? I mean, Roxa? Uh, so level one gank, no flash, and then uh, based on the fact they had no flash, Caps was like already communicating before the game that he wanted to play really aggressive in this matchup in the early levels. So we just made sure we could set him up there, and then we capitalized. Uh, I feel like, especially the um, the kill on Trundle on top of it was like icing on like icing on the cake. You know, like <laughs> after that mid two v two is like almost unplayable for uh, Schalke. So. You know, I was just killing minions whilst uh, Caps and Brox take over the game. I mean, were you expecting actually Yasuo to flash level 1 versus an Ariana mm. level 1 and Sen level 1? Because it was quite interesting for me. In the moment <laughs> I saw Sen there, I was like, okay, he's not going to flash. We, we, we actually planned most of our level 1s and like most of our early game level 1 to 5 roaming and all this stuff, we actually planned. But so it, it was planned that he was going to flash. Well, or he was going to lose give away, I, I wasn't. I'm not going to give away too much, but you should notice the trinket on Chen. Okay. So okay, there we go. Th there is actually okay. some planning going on. Of course, like if he plays it properly and respects it, it might not work. But yeah. In this game, you saw like sometimes yeah, it does pay works. off. It worked. And uh, well, it kind of ended the game right there, no? So that's yeah, that's nice definitely. because it, it used to be, I guess, kind of a meme and the fanatic and the death brush and whatnot. But you guys are actively working on your level one strategies in every single game. And you know, just to keep it interesting, that might be that you do nothing in the next yeah. game, but the I mind mean, games are on. I mean, I think even in the spring split, like we did a lot of cheesy level ones with uh, like Brom, Tristana, both taking W, jumping over walls, all this type of stuff. So I feel like most teams already are aware, like. Uh, even in the scouting, we noticed that uh, one of their players was a little more safe than he normally is because I'm pretty sure that people like pay attention. They're like, oh, we're flying as Fnatic. Let's uh, step on Bush, but like, let's move on Bush further back. Mm -hmm. You guys were wondering about the player of the game, and I can uh, well break the suspense. It is Broxa. 47% yeah. of the votes. Nice. This is his very first player of the game award. I believe that is the split. Um, so is that then deserved? Please? I mean, he was you... highest level in the game. Like, uh, like <laughs> after level, level 14, he was the highest level in the game. I was just like, holy moly. You know, I like mean, after what he said about uh, amazing, amazing? <laughs> yeah. in the pregame, saying that with even his four all teammates, he can beat amazing. I think he's going to get the player of the game, yeah, regardless of really what he does. Yeah, I was really surprised because Broxa is usually pretty soft spoken guy, yeah. right? And then he went in and he's like, oh, you can even give me my uh, Fnatic Academy <laughs> players back. I'd still beat him. Wow. So yeah. was the fire also translated into uh, into the game and the comms? Yeah, of course. I feel like, um, I mean, the com in game itself, I think we were really calm and collected because, again, like most of the stuff we did was planned. So we knew what was coming. Of course, it went better than expected. <laughs> Getting two kills at three minutes <laughs> off of a Shen roaming it's twice is, is pretty, I think it's on the better end of uh, our games. But I feel like... We knew what was going on. I was always safe in the bot lane every time Hillasang moved, and like we were always communicating, like whatever what the enemy team could do, what we could do. So I feel like I think we were really calm, really collected, and we just played the game like we should. Yeah, great stuff. You guys are looking fantastic. I also have the Fisho standing by, who I think is going to join us right now. Maybe. Call Martin. <laughs> join us, Martin. Was I not supposed to? Hi, friends. <laughs> you got someone to carry your chair for you. You're such a prince. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, once you reach my status. <laughs> I have to give a shout out to Rike, who's a, a stage manager who has had to do some epic stuff. This split, he had to pull Trevor off the set uh, mm. last week yeah. when he was going off his rocker. Uh, he... Either him or me. I was about to do it. <laughs> Got in the way. Uh, in any case, Fnatic won, and the race for playoffs is, is still on, although it looks like you guys will be pretty locked in to playoffs. Let's take a look at uh, the standings. Misfits won also today, and G2 won as well over Splice, so the top three is still what it was. Shalka, six and five. Um, is that correct? No, they was, lost. No. They were five and five. No, 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 they were six oh. and four. Oh, they were six and four, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Six my bad, four, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. We said this on the cast list towards the end. I'm sure you guys heard it when you were uh, getting off stage. And there's like four groups in the EULCS standings. Yeah. <laughs> Top three, all fighting for first place, all looking really strong when, you know, whenever they snowball. Middle group of Schalke, Rocket, Vitality, Splice. I think we actually might have forgotten Rocket in our little conversation there, but <laughs> that's a group of teams who are likely to make playoffs. We, we forgot Rocket, but because we, we actually think that Rocket is going to make it for sure. So we are thinking about uh. the other two coming there. Or at least my point of view. 
I think it's hard to call right now. Like, I feel like with those four teams, mm. it, man, they can go either way. Only one of them will have to drop out. Because I yeah. think on the bottom, it's getting real tough for Giants and Unicorns. It's super interesting. Uh, I want to and I need to talk about Team Vitality. Buipo, you know about the substitution, <laughs> I yep. suspect. So Kikis came in today for uh, Team Vitality. Team Vitality had been on an 0-2 week and a three-game losing streak, so it hadn't been looking good at all. Uh, they played versus Giants and... Yeah, they won. Was and rough. Kikis was player of the game, and they turned it around. And those are a couple of things that I think are pretty rough if you're being benched as a jungler, because Vitality usually never wins when they're behind. They never come back, right? We've said this many times. They need a lead to win. Not only do they turn it around, but Kikis gets player of the game. What does that mean if you're on the bench? Uh, and I we mean, have I, the prime I, bench I, yeah, I have here. I have uh, some experience on the bench. So I think, honestly, I think he's most, Gilles is mostly happy. I think that in the first place, the fact that they fell behind and then came back, or I'm not sure how the game went. I believe it went like they were ahead. There yeah, we they were ahead. So they got ahead with him and then fell behind and then go back up. So I feel like in general, I don't think they're proud of that game. I don't feel like it's a performance that Gilius is like sweating about, you know? Like I don't think okay. it's like, oh, like he was smurfing the entire game, shot calling like mid uh, early, mid, late, and then just ended the game. So I feel like he's kind of comfortable. I don't know for sure, but as long as the relationship between each other is I mean, this is literally what, what Yamata said. They just bring in one guy, test him out, and having to work with six members, you know? Like, that's yeah. the ideal roster that Yamato saw us, and I think that's what they're going to work on. For playoffs, having two sub or two players on the same role that they can be swapping in and swapping out, I think is the best thing. I want to ask now that we have uh, the king of, uh, of subs, <laughs> king we of have a coach. Uh, what are some of the difficulties you have to deal with as a team when you get more than five players? In Ego. this case here. Egos. Really? How do you deal with that? I think dealing with egos, probably not in your case or <laughs> not in the other part case, uh, I think it's pretty rough because some of the players doesn't really like to to be a part or to don't play these important games mm. or important matches. So some of the players get really, I'm not going to say mad, but tense or, or nervous about not playing it. And, and the bad feeling and the, yeah. the, the bad vibes it has behind the yeah, games, yeah, yeah. I think is, is, is toxic for the whole team. That's from my point of view. From his point of view, probably. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it's kind of different for us because uh, I feel like I was always okay with letting Soros play. Of course, like you know, he was he always was yeah, Soros okay, okay letting you play. That's, That's my, my point. <laughs> uh, I was only planned. I was planned for zero LCS games when I came in. So when I came as a substitute, I was not even gonna play a scrim, not even gonna play on stage. Zero. I like nobody like in this room would know who I am. But Soros pushed for one scrim game for me. And then he pushed for a second LCS game. So when we were locked in after beating Unicorns, I wasn't going to, like, I, I was just going to sit on the bench for the rest of the season. But so I was just like, I think it's better if we play him so that we that he's ready for playoffs. So at least one more LCS game, I believe, against Giants. And he actually pushed for me to play. So I'm pretty sure if you're pushing for someone to play, you're okay with him playing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a difference between, like, kind of doing the right thing and knowing what's good for the team and what you think about when you're going to bed at night and when you are this competitive right. player, right? I think there's definitely still... I think MSI, for example, we didn't approach that very well, and I do feel like those feelings were there for him. I do feel like that was a very stressful environment for him yeah. because he had to, obviously he came from uh, the injury mm -hmm. and he came back and he had to ramp up to, to, to the high level and I was playing really well in scrims. So um, from that point of view, I'm pretty sure that happened. But after MSI, we got a sports psychologist, we talked about it and honestly, right now we're really chill. Well, can are you, have you been bailed out by the meta? Because <laughs> you didn't have to play Reckless anymore. You could both play and all problems disappeared. I mean, in the Reckless case, it's different because from his point of view, I think he's a very extreme player in the sense that he will push his belief and his belief from like week one was if we're going to play uh me like it needs to be with like this style this way these champions or you should just play with points that mm -hmm. so with that in mind it hasn't been difficult because he just he was the one that was just just put him in you well, know he plays all the champions i don't just Fnatic. put him in i mean i mean the biggest difference with Fnatic is that yes. the two players getting replaced are two really veterans mm. two guys that have been playing from the start of the game like season 1 season 2 reckless and so as were playing there <laughs> so after 8 seasons obviously you kind of need a break but i would like to see what happen if you actually sub for someone like caps i, I don't know how is that. caps going to feel well, what is he going to think? Let's bring mm. it back to the current case, which is Gilius. You talk about a guy who, he's not like a veteran in the sense of record, he's but he that, has yeah. been playing for okay. years and years. He has wanted to prove himself. And for me, 
he finally was able to prove himself, I feel like, in spring with Vitality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vitality burst onto the scene. They had their rookies. They had Gilius. They were winning left, right, and center. They then slowed down, still got to the semifinals, still got to play on the big stage. And we were looking at what is going to happen in summer. And now it's not going well. And the first thing the coach does is subs him out. I think... So that obviously sucks if you're Gilius, but I think for now he's okay with the situation. So it's based around some of the things he's saying. I think it's truly going to suck if he actually gets replaced for good. Yeah. Because that's kind of mm. the thing is you can take your your player like Gilius. You can say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna bench you right now. We're gonna get some fresh blood in here. We're getting we need a new guy in yeah, comms. Yeah. We need a, some something new. Yeah. It works for a couple of games, and then you put Gilius back in, and he finds success word. again, and then it's okay, and then everything is fine. The moment you keep him on the bench, or you only sub him in for one game, and they lose that game, and you sub him right back out. That's where you get your problem, because that's where you lost your starting spot. For now, he's sharing it. You haven't lost it yet. The moment you lose it, I think it's tough to bounce back. I mean, people might wonder why we're going like so deep into this, but I think for me, that comes from the fact that this was, okay, Kikis is added to the roster. Okay, he's probably not going to play. Boom, he plays immediately. Right. It was not like, oh, this is a preconceived plan, like Yamato, uh, no, no disrespect <laughs> to him, but we asked him the question in the interview, and he just said, you know, it's a system that we're trying here and there. This was just literally, he came in and he played, sure, right? But so. It's also because in Europe, we don't have a track record of using subs very often. Yeah, so I right? applaud it. Which is why, of course, this whole Fnatic scenario is, <laughs> is still so special. But most teams, I hear them talk sometimes about, oh, 10-man roster would be insane. I can just constantly, you know, sub that's in and out, scrim with yeah. each other all the time. But it never really happens. So the fact that we have more teams doing it, that's why it's special. Definitely. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to talk about two of these things. First thing, there was an old team who was playing with six members. There was Origin, <laughs> having Xpeke subbing for mid lane, top lane, support, yeah, yeah, jungle yeah. lane, the carry. So he was actually the, the best sub ever. And then about the 10-man <laughs> roster, <laughs> about the 10-man roster. Um, best sub, worst team. <laughs> what is this? About the 10-man roster, there was one in Spain, uh, Riders, Movistar Riders. They decided to create 10-man roster with Daylor uh, leading the project, but it ended up not working out. It was impossible to control five players one of the things were probably the ego, because obviously all the players want to play. Obviously all the players want to have their games, their MVPs, their, their good games and stuff, but they could not have them. Also, if you're screaming between each other all the time, there is a moment that you know each other, you know how the other, the other player is playing. So you kind of study them and it's, it's not really efficiency for you. Mm -hmm. So at the end, Riders actually decided this split to just break the 10-man roster and just go for a six-man roster that is more logical. That, that seems like the sweet spot. I mean, uh, it's teams easier at yeah. least. But I think also, because you know, when I see this discussion happening in the community, people often highlight in sports, you have, you know, big rosters, but that's f physical sports, first of all, where your body can only do so much, you need breaks, so you can put in a different player. Which also, by in sports, you can actually have a worse player on the bench and still use him because you're using him to give your stars a break. In esports right now, you don't need to do that. You don't need to put your star player on the bench so he can relax. For a week, I mean, that's that's what they do with reckless. I mean, there yeah, is fatigue. Sure, that's relaxing what right now. Yeah. Reckless is relaxing. There definitely is fatigue as well, oh, right? Oh, yeah, but um, I mean, look at the LCS. You play two games a week on stage. You should not need a break for that. So there's no reason for you to get a worse player on your bench just to use him from time to time oh, to save your star. <laughs> you know, you don't have to do that like in sports. So there's a big difference in that case where eSports, you can just run with five starters. And as long as they're really good and can play different yeah, champions, you can stick to those five. Well, or you have a clear, absolutely clear set of strengths, and they're both equally good and have tactical advantages sure. when you that's sub the in dream the one scenario. Or the other. I mean, yes. that's what I think what uh, Fnatic has going right now. Be it with the meta, it's all a bit turned on I mean, its head because yeah. you're not really playing uh, top lane champions. But um, I mean, they're all just mages. I feel like I actually played a lot of the top lane mages that were viable. So mm -hmm. like Vladimir and Swain are still the best two, I think. Yeah. And these were champions that I even picked at MSI. So like I have extent have had extensive practice for throughout the split. Um, for playing them, and I feel like, honestly, the biggest like the, the the biggest issue with bot lane for me is I feel like you can pick any champion in the game, and if you're good enough, it will work. You played Victor today. So uh, case in point. I mean, I actually think Victor is one of the better ones. Um, but is it good or bad that you can do that in the bot lane? I think it's or good. Like, I mean, I think it's good because it, it just it's good for viewership. I think it's more enjoyable for people to see random champions like Wukong come out. Uh, of course, this was mid lane, but again, I, I'm pretty sure you can play in bot. Other regions are playing Cled, like they're playing whatever the hell they want, and I think that's really good for entertainment. I also think it's good for people to stay interested in the game. 
Because I can imagine if you're playing a lane and you play for eight years straight and it's the same meta that comes back and back and back, Nar versus Jarvan, Nar versus whatever, Gragas versus Sejuani, every single time over and over again, same for bot lane, you're playing Kog'Maw versus whatever, I can get that at some point you feel like your practice isn't as valuable. Whereas now it's just a complete, like, complete new view. Like, have you ever seen Zed bot lane? No. I'm pretty sure you could play it. Sure. If you're good enough at it, I'm pretty sure you can make cool. it work. I love so how you're telling you us that you're going to play set bot lane or tomorrow or next week. <laughs> right? Of course, I'm naming <laughs> champions that I'm not I, I, playing. I, I just wanted to make but sure that the set bot lane is going to come trust up. Trust me, when I say that we have practice champions, that nobody <laughs> has played bot lane across the entire world. We have practiced them. You have. There the are edge. a few very, very spicy picks. That is for sure. Cool. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to the playoffs. It's ways away, but every game is starting to count in that regard. So, uh, Aranea, at the beginning of the day, we asked the people, who is the real deal? We asked you guys, and now I asked you to uh, make, well, a top 10. For a top 10? At, at the top end 10. of week nine. So, basically, Ooh. who's going to make it into playoffs and who doesn't make it into playoffs? Aranea's real deal reveal. Ta-da! Wow. All right, so Ooh, first up, Misfits Gaming, talk. number one. So, nobody overtakes them. Fnatic G2 Esports. Not that interesting. Let's look at the <laughs> other three. So Rocket is number four for Aranea. What do you guys think? There he goes. Oh, first tell me why. I bet. Uh, mainly because I think uh, the Rocket problem they have is they are, for me, kind of like a coin flip, that I said before, where Memento really need to uh, perform well on the early game. when, And, and they're also this kind of team that can be the top teams. They are the only team from the lower tier that they can beat top teams. The rest of the teams, I don't think Salka, Vitality, Splice or Unicorns can beat the top three teams. But Rocket, actually, they can. In some games, if Memento goes crazy early game, they can have a really good start and they can beat them. So thinking about this, if Rocket is able to beat these low tier teams, I believe they're going to end at fourth place. Oh, guys. Mm. See, I can see it happen. But I can also see Rocket just drop everything on the ground randomly, yeah. and that's why I absolutely hate predicting them uh, <laughs> when it comes to this. But every team underneath them, like Spice got absolutely demolished today. Yeah. Uh, but I, I still think based on players, it might be a safer bet to get in top six. Yeah, what do you guys think over of the what? fact that Aranea puts uh, Splice on seventh over some of the other teams, Weepo? I actually think they're very reliant on certain champions in draft. Like, 100%. Yeah. This, this Bumble, this Zoe, I'll name two. You, you, you take away these champions Agreed. and uh, it's, it already becomes very shaky what's Completely going on. You already have no idea what's going to happen in the game. They could be hard smurfing or they're going to run it down mid. So, like, I feel like uh, even Xerxes has his trundle. That's already uh, yeah, yeah. one of his comfort picks. I feel like uh, Kasing has a few comfort picks on his own. I think Hobby is most flexible, but I feel like uh, if people actually just respect that instead of banning champions that are good in the meta necessarily, just, like, take them off their comfort picks, I think some of their players become very questionable very fast. Yeah, Canada we are talking exactly about this. Yeah, can, can, so because would you put them outside? I put Schalke number four, personally, and then underneath that, it's just a mess of so many. Like teams. reflex wise, you kind of want to take out Rocket to leave in Splice Vitality and Schalke, like for safety, because that sounds like the logical <laughs> thing to do. But you're doing Rocket. You're doing that on base and name. Yeah, you're doing that base and name. Yeah, he's doing that probably because Rocket has less fan base, so the the haters I mean, are not gonna go on him. You know, follow my Twitter. <laughs> I mean, at the Fischio Eagle. So, so do you really think, do you actually really think Rocket is going to end at 6th, No, I did not place? say that. I said 4th place is the one I, I okay. struggle with. So 4th place is going to be Schalke? I give Schalke 4th place. 5th place is going to be who? I go Splice 5, I go Rocket, Rocket 6. And Vitality fall out of play. Vitality 7. They should have lost to Giants today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it I mean, it's did. possible. Like The substitution obviously shakes things up, right? Like It could work out really well or it could go boom. And then they just you, don't have a if style. If you tank like, three or four losses, then the I, game always, like, yeah. it's always harder to make playoffs. Like, I feel like Vitality has lost their strength. Mm. Like Again, it can be meta, it can be the fact that certain people are not performing, but like they ha have to rely on team fighting every single game. Yeah. And it's not an advantage for them at all. Uh, I thought the game was over when Giants got the first Baron. I was like, holy moly, like, they're just winning every fight. Like, the coordination is just completely off between, you know, diving in from Vitality side. They win the game, which is important to obviously stay, you know, above Giants. But I just think based on what we've seen, like, it is a coin flip along, uh, among most of the teams, which is great for excitement. Mm. I just don't think Vitality, other than name-wise, is actually better than the teams around them. So two more questions about that. First off, so do you guys all agree that none of the teams now at 
8, 9, and 10 in this one. So the Unicorns of Love Giants and H2K, who are actually outside of the playoff conversation most of the time because they are furthest off mm -hmm. uh, the teams that can make it. I heard some talks about Unicorns of Love that could make it, but it's getting more difficult for them every single day. But to be fair, like t today when I was watching Unicorns, I, I didn't expect Exile to go that behind versus Senkux, but... I actually didn't predict that Botlane was gonna kill like 2v2 twice. Yeah. Like first time, okay, you don't respect Raven, but then second time it's just a Morgana binding from a brush that that should never ever happen on Botlane. Like you can probably don't respect that much Raven early game because Raven early game is crazy. I mean, probably probably if you play Botlane player, right, right now. No, I mean you should respect Raven. Like okay. I think if, if there's any champion in the game that you're like, who's the scariest early game in Raven. Botlane? You're gonna For say sure. Raven, so you should be able to see that one coming. The second kill was the one that. Get me a bit like I didn't yeah. understand at all. It was a random Morgana binding hitting into Rakan and then getting a second key into Raven. I was like, okay, this game is completely over because I I kind of I kind of thought that Exile could do something else on mid lane. I thought White Knight could actually be ahead on farm, but if nothing of like this happened, then I feel like it's cold alone. Oh, it is. It does definitely look a bit the last two weeks like cold. Uh, sadly. 1v5-ing um, because it's just not clicking because he's doing what he's mm. supposed to do, I guess. Yeah. But then the question is, well, if it's not working, should he then go for something more controlling? Should he go for a Sejuani? I don't no, know. No, I, th I think he needs no. to go crazy. Needs to go crazy. I think he yeah. literally needs to go crazy. Pick Try like Pantheon, yeah, pick, pick Pantheon and start go. going. Yeah. Kill but that, that's the question I asked the, the guys uh, a bit earlier as well. When things don't work for certain people, like, you know, Cold can't put the rest of the team on his back and someone like Memento, hmm does that, right? He goes into a game, he gets one or two kills, he feeds all his lane, and is that just that his lanes are better at snowballing once they get, like, one advantage? Like, is Profit great at then roaming to another lane and, and snowballing mm. his advantage for him? I mean, I think it's a combination of both. I think individually, uh, they have, a, like, Rockat has better players than yeah. UL right now. Like, I'm not saying they're bad or whatever, but, you know, I've never been, like, holy moly, you know, I can't lane against, well, either of the bot lanes. Um, <laughs> you get my <laughs> point, you know, like, um, I, I just feel like, yeah, it's just tough. Because I don't think they draft necessarily to like hard snowball, which I feel like Rockhead actually does. Like they like picking the rumble, uh, which is working out for them right now. Uh, I feel like that's actually like a, a staple pick that's work. Like makes snowballing easy, right? Because he pushes yeah. the wave, and either people concede the lane, and then you run anywhere you want and drop your ult, and you get something, or you just dive the guy. So I feel like. They're drafting around at that point of the idea of let's take lanes that can set up memento. That let let's get something done in the early game, and I like that. Yeah. I'd like you all to do that too. So um, my final question about kind of the standings in general, not just your prediction, but that was Misfits Fanatic G2. Um, Wipo, can you tell me what? But am I going to read any other predictions, like the Fisio prediction? No, or I was we only have time for prediction or oh, I mean, Oh, you were trying to talk stage. I was standing and yelling. The point I, was I don't that think anybody's going to be surprised at my prediction, so... Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to ask, <laughs> I actually... Mean, I, 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 sorry if I interrupted <laughs> That's you okay. last time. You're the host now, I get actually, over here. <laughs> I, actually ask, I actually ask if Misfits is going to play against Fnatic before the end of the season, because I think if you will be facing them, probably Fnatic will be first place. But since that's yeah, 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 that's actually true. Right. That's a good call. Like, that's the true what, the, what I said on, on Euphoria as well. It's like, ah, oh, it's not really Great in our podcast. hands. It's not in our hands. Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I love it when you guys just uh, bring up topics. I mean, yourself. you get so second place, and then what does it matter? <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I guess. No, I did it. <laughs> that was on purpose, right? A little bit. Carry on. <laughs> Can I go? <laughs> I swear it has to be so interesting now. The only thing I wanted to ask is how strong is the top three, um, you know, in comparison to the rest of the entirety of the table, and how far are we starting to think ahead in terms of playoffs? Can anyone touch Misfits, Fnatic, or G2, respectively, to start? Mm, it's a tough one, because I feel like not only do the top teams have better mastery over the best champions, so, like, I feel like, you know, um, Misfits, like not included, but like G2 and, and us have really good control over the bot lane mages. We have our specific mages that you can't really ban out every game. We're going to get them eventually and we're going to win uh, the game or like the lane at least or have a good position from our laning phase of the, the, in the first place. I feel like drafting is better from the top three teams and I think that's a pretty big deal right now given yeah. how hard you can punish someone in draft, especially uh, mid lane matchup, uh, bot lane matchup, jungle matchup. Um, because if anything goes badly in certain jungle matchups, the game is just boom. Like, yeah. for example, this game, Trondal into Nocturne. If the Nocturne ever gets ahead, the game ends for their laners. Yeah. Like, Nocturne has full pressure everywhere and just unplayable situation. But it goes the same on the other side. If Trundle gets 
early game g ganks. Exactly. And Nocturne cannot do any scuttle because he's not supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. He's not supposed yeah, yeah, to contest exactly. any single scuttle versus yeah. Trundle. If your lanes are pushing, Trundle can get control of the scuttle, can get control of the river. Nocturne can. I mean, he's going to be able to gank because he's Nocturne yeah. level six. He can do whatever yeah, he wants. Yeah, yeah. But Trundle should be actually in a good moment to just roll over the lanes. Exactly, and that's why I'm, why draft is really important, because if you get the winning the winning lanes, you get the, your bad jungle matchup, getting the crabs anyway, yeah. getting ahead anyway, then the game is just really difficult. Like, for example, against Misfits, we had the Sejuani Wukong, which is like pre-six, like, we, we're not, they're not even champions, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. they're minions. <laughs> and then we got to level six, got crabs, like, we got everything. So the game just ends. It was unplayable for Senkux after not a certain stage. A <laughs> like, the, it was unplayable for him. And yeah, yeah. even if there are people behind him, with the way we set up the gangs, like, we don't care. We'll, we'll kill him anyway. And that's kind of the thing now with the top teams. And it's like, I feel like every draft as well, when you're casting it, you're just like, wow, these four champions can go to like three different lanes. Like you can't really answer anything mm. properly or these players can just like swap yep. around if they want to. So you combine the large champion pools with the fact that there's some individually very good players like that for most mm. part are a step above if you look at the rest of the league uh, right now. And then you have a meta where uh, macro is kind of changed a lot. It's a lot about just yeah. early game snowballing uh, coming in. And if you didn't have to, you have the best players, you have flexible drafts, and it's all about winning early game to snowball, that's a recipe for success for these top teams. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, it's not that, oh man, we made a mistake in the late game, it was a slow game with no kills. Which like, is much more unforgiving. I wish, because exactly. then if you actually do make a mistake, then you can get punished with hot. But it's so hard. If you fall behind now against good teams, they are supposed to run over you. About that macro point, Aranea this morning said on the, this afternoon said on the start of the show that he thinks Misfits has undeniably the best macro out of all the teams in the LCS. Yeah, I, now you guys did beat them last. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, but if you're giving up every crab as Trundle and Sejuani, I don't think you have very good macro. I mean, they beat them, but how they beat them wasn't exactly I mean, I think macro. Wait, isn't uh, but they? The but they, like, <laughs> that's the thing. I feel like macro is tango, right? They didn't want to tango. That's how I felt when I was playing this game. I am 100% serious when I say this. When I was playing against Misfits, I did not have the feeling like Misfits wanted to tango. Trundle farmed his entire his entire jungle without showing the face in River from levels 1 till 4. If this is good early game macro or good early game planning when you're playing Trundle into Sejuani, I think maybe you just choked. I think but from what I saw, from what I saw, <laughs> that was, was one game as well. Uh, yeah. It was one game, from of course. I I, I'm exaggerating because we won. Season, because oh, to be sure. fair, to be fair, I think, I, I think the first game they played versus you, it was completely the opposite, right? We were playing funnel, and then they invade us when their <laughs> jungler was level four to level seven, and then boom from you, and then we entered. Yeah. <laughs> like trust me, was, over when we went over this review, uh, people were saying, we if we give up this buff, the game is over. But it doesn't matter. I, un I understand. I'm saying the second time, I feel like we played standard, we played our game, and I did not feel contested by misfits whatsoever. So let's remember all. Let's remember this kind of interaction when come playoffs, if and when. Fnatic oh, give me that best of five play. already! Oh yeah, hell yeah! Let's oh, go yeah. right now. I'll take go. it. I'm feeling it too, actually. Yeah. Like, actually, because the thing is, like that happened. But I feel like, like I said, I feel like it was more of a slow mis. Like they took the game too slow, and He's they let a different us. Different tune now. Oh, they no, no, took no, the no, game no, no, of course not. I'm just saying, you know, like I can imagine if you're playing as Wukong mid, you really don't know what, what the hell the champion does, you know. Like, do you actually realize that at level six, Wukong Sejuani is going to take over the game 2v2? No. I mean, I that call was don't. to snowball bot. They killed you guys bot lane, right? Yeah, and like, yeah, but like that's what I was saying, that I didn't feel contested. They had a really good matchup bot. It was really tough for me to walk up to the wave, but they let me clear it over and over again. They did get that gank off once. We didn't expect it, but then there was really, they didn't capitalize on it. I feel like they missed, up on the, missed out on the opportunity to snowball bot, which they could have. And then, yeah, our Wukong started killing people. He did. I mean, for me, two things that we have to talk about, or we should talk about, is first of all, he's talking about how good, especially he said D2 and Fnatic are right now on these on these champions, especially the mages in bot lane. Yeah. But what's gonna happen if uh, uh, Meta switch? Yeah, if I mean, because at that point, at that hey, moment, hey, 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 we have this like pretty good AD carry player. I'm not sure if you heard of him. Like he got MVP twice in a row now. Yeah, uh, I don't know pretty, who, it, who it is. I'm pretty sure we'll be all right. I don't know who it is. Okay. But then you have also G2, where Jaranon is also known for his mages, not for his AD carries. Exactly. But so that's, I actually think yeah. 
also, even though even though you have that player, you said he win two MVPs in the past. <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, he's not playing on the past weeks. I'm not sure if he's playing a scrimmage or not. Probably he is. Yes. We've, we 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 cannot see that. Uh, he's not playing on LCS, so I'm not sure if his level is going to be exactly the same as he was when he left. Well, because that's that's something we'll we catch up pretty we'll, uh, quickly. I think we, have we can had give him the benefit of the doubt. A couple of times, and this is where we need to reach our quota of reckless, reckless, reckless. We miss you, reckless. All that. We'll see you again. Uh, uh, who, who said uh, reckless, by the way? <laughs> yeah, I, we, we didn't reckless. know who it was. Oh, okay. We might have a new sub. Yeah, yeah. Is there a new Ooh. sub. Okay. And in any case, we've had this conversation a couple of times, but only time will tell. As said, AD carry buffs mm. a little bit at a time. Teleport changes now. And we did see a lot of AD carries today, I have to say. Um, but, you know, there's no way to say how it definitively will change back or not. So we'll I mean, I'm looking at the item buffs in the next patch where IH is cheaper, you know, zeal item as well. I think that's some PBE buff. Maybe yeah. not fully like locked in yet, but yeah. there's a lot of great changes uh, to a lot of the AD carry items. I expected... Uh, to see Whippo read those patch notes and try a little <laughs> right, bit. He was like, oh, You should check my solo key. There is Zion there. All right, all right. So now he wanted to take the AD carry spot as no, well. No, no, I uh, just, I think that uh, it would just be valuable if I could play some. I think that's very sure, reasonable, I mean, you, have you know? To, like, I have no intention. Mages will still be viable. If, yeah, of course, that's my point. Like, until mages completely disappear out of the meta, if teams have to first three ban mages or, like, draft really awkwardly because there's certain matchups they can't play because I play random champions, um, I feel like that's valuable. And if I can play a few AD carries on top and perform like to a human level, you know, like I can right click on people. Dude, that's <laughs> then, the next level. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, just because this game is a good example, you know, I didn't do anything. Uh, there were you four pushed, people on my you team. You pushed minions. I killed minions. Important. That's my point. And Most I can kill minions on Zaya too, you know? Like, I can just do that. Yeah, see, so the thing that might swing it to AD carries more than just uh, item changes, unless they become super cheap, is just the games needs to be longer. But right now, it's mm. too easy to finish games. Like, turrets are paper, you know, Baron doesn't deal any damage. So, it doesn't matter if you're great in three items, if you never get to three items, yeah. uh, AD carry or not. And that's kind of the thing uh, that is, I don't think is looked at right now in terms of some of the PPE changes, which means we're still going to have Snowball meta. Uh, and that then it doesn't matter that Jinx is getting like 10 million buffs. Just one because thing I actually want to add on to people is that people don't realize is that mages don't actually have pressure against AD carry's bot lane. So, 2v2, strictly, Mostly dependent, like sport matchup plays a big difference. But Lucian, for example, is a champion. When enemy locks it in, I don't have a mage I can pick that will have pressure on Lucian. Mm -hmm. I think this is pretty commonly known. But the idea is, is that their AD carries have lane pressure. It's just the kill pressure that the mages provide eventually drown out AD carries for the majority of the game. I think on one also item, the, the, almost all mages yeah, will be strong. The power spike of the mages come exactly. really faster. Yeah. Like, it's not the same that you have to build with uh, something like Lucian, uh, Blade of the Rune King, Cannon, and something else to be actually a good champion. Because mm. Blade, okay, he's a fine champion. He has no range at all to do anything. So probably most of the mages can push him at that time when they have one item versus one item. Actually, I don't think so. I actually think Lucian specifically, like that's why I named Lucian. This champion will push me in levels 1 to 18 if he wants to. Okay, and then <laughs> what can he do in a team fight? But that's my point. I'm just saying, you know, like people are like, oh, you know, blah, 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 mages like kill people or have pressure on lane, but they really don't. Like, I mean, you know, if I'm playing lane, mages also just push. Mm -hmm. Some do. I mean, that's like, why Heimerdinger is so popular yeah, because yeah. he's one of the guys that just pushes. You can't stop him. Like, exactly. He will just push and he has the power spike. You just play to the other side of the map, you know, that's effective. It is great. I'm actually I'm glad that some of the AD carries are getting more buffs because yeah. you want a meta where I mean right now I think we have a meta where they're both are viable. Yeah. But, Absolutely. But I, I'm missing some of the late game AD carries because as a caster and as a viewer, I do miss watching a late game team fight where you set it up for 20 minutes about Uzi. You're just like, okay, what is Uzi <laughs> I knew. doing? <laughs> Uzi's coming. doing yeah. this. And then Uzi but on the three items wins the game. The problem is that uh, in, you know, not just to call out the ULC specifically, but there's mostly not Uzi. It's mostly other people. I mean, in this case, you can say Reckless, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, sure, yeah. I mean, no, I, 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 I loved it when so he jumped around on Tristan and killed everybody. You actually, do you actually prefer an art than meta? No. Over no. this? <laughs> Let's not go that far. I mean, that was the only time that actually Nami was a viable pick and you could play <laughs> Hey, it. season you three, she was super, viable, man. man. Uh, <laughs> I think just the fact that you can have both. You want early game snowball, mm. you want mages who can one-shot AD carries, like a spellbind of Vladimir, just like, boop, you're dead. But you also want to... AD carry getting the three items, and you're like, look at this guy, he's gonna I win think that's the, the sweet spot, which is, I guess, also what we would love to have in competitive, but it's We're so kind of hard. There. I still think We're but, kind but, of but, there, but, but it is pretty think, hard to get that. Actually, I think if you if you watch other regions like Korea, uh, team like Genji, like the old Samsung, they 
keep playing AD carries. They never played anything else than AD carries. Like, Ruler never picked any kind of mages. Like, they first pick Swain, and enemy team knows Swain is going to go or mid lane or top lane, and they start banning AD carries because they know Ruler won't play a single AD carry. So you're so telling me, once we get to Worlds, EU is just going to crush them with their Heimerdinger spot lane? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, I actually think I actually think Heimerdinger game. versus a champion like Ethereal suffers a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. Ethereal can actually mm -hmm. clear the towers pretty easy. I'm gonna he's going to get pushed, but Edward is going to I don't think they're farm. suffering. I understand, There's but... No, uh, he's going he's to farm up. You know, and then at two items, Edward is really not. I mean, of course. It's Ezreal. All right. Cool. That I, I would like to let you guys keep going, but I mean, we also still have a show tomorrow, and you need to go prepare <laughs> as well for that uh, for oh those yeah, games tomorrow. Yeah. So I mean, he's gonna pick Victor and Wave Clear. Okay, so. let's take a look at who you're Maybe. playing. Uh, we H also have Vitality versus Rocket, by the way, our first game of the day, which I am incredibly hyped for. Oh, yeah. As said, Rocket kind of a coin flop team, but they, if they go one and one again, then that's good news for Vitality. But do they break the curse? Does Rocket go two zero and beat Vitality tomorrow? Oh, I mean, they never do. Uh, that's the thing. But I looked at all the matchups tomorrow when we did our predictions. That's like, your job. Damn, yeah, it is true. <laughs> uh, I kind of show up and be like, oh, what's happening today? But uh, I like, I saw a lot of the matchups. I'm like, who, who am I actually predicting to win this? Uh, especially the first two were the ones with huge question marks. I think Rocket look better. And the moment I say that, they will completely destroy themselves uh, and just lose. And also Giants Unicorns, man. Man, I got no clue. Splice Misfits? Misfits. Misfits. I mean, no I think... After today? Like I said, I think if they don't get their core picks, yeah. it's going to be a relatively smooth game. But if they do, I feel like there's weakness in, in some... Like, you can find weakness. Like, for example, if I died level 1 to us, you know, okay, he always walks the same spot. That was a great level we, 1. We knew, like, we knew it was going to be there. You know, that's just 400 gold in our pocket. There's also something I, I found interesting in, in Europe that is red side. Like, actually today, every single team from blue side, except of S2K, okay, won. Yeah. Uh, why is blue side so strong? Right now, there is a lot of really strong picks. And especially the last three weeks or two weeks, Korea were always banning the same three champions. So it was Atrox, Talija, and Nocturne. So red side had pretty much no bans at all. They had to ban these three champions, and then blue side is the one deciding, okay, I'm going to ban Hamer versus this guy, I'm going to ban um, Rumble versus this guy, whatever you want to ban. And then you decide the draft from blue side. So it's red side just contesting or answering with picks. Pretty much. But I don't know what's going on in Europe, because <laughs> I keep seeing or Nocturne or Talia or Atrox open every single day. It's true that in Korea this last week, Nocturne okay, has been open, open well. all the time right now. I guess they practice a lot versus it and they know how to counter Nocturne with like yeah, yeah. tanks, tanks, they just tanks. They just everything actually. They just yeah. trundle under they Nocturne love and just play the game. They just play the game. Yeah. And they just go like full tank comps. Yep. And then if Nocturne is picked, Nocturne is an assassin at all. Yeah. So there is a moment that he cannot kill anyone What's and he's going inside. You? My point is like I've seen every single the, every single team today letting Ortalija or Nocturne or Atrox open. And I I'm not a coach on LCS anymore, but I don't see why is this keep happening, you know? Yeah. Like, I prefer to let like a Zoe open or a Swain open over these three champions right now, at least for myself. Peculiar case. The peculiar case of uh, the blue side in Europe. We'll see tomorrow what happens, um, but there's more league action tonight in NALCS Academy. The action is going to be starting up with FlyQuest versus Echo Fox at midnight, and then after that we'll have the rebroadcast from everything EU LCS um, after the last game is finished in LA. And then tomorrow we will be back with all of these games and our guests. So thank you very much, Bipo. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow versus H2K. Aranea on your throne because we need to keep reminding people that we're going to Madrid, so get your tickets on eu.esports.com slash Madrid. Right. And that's it. Sock talk. <laughs> no socks. He's actually wearing tiny socks. Yep. You can't show that much skin. Yeah. You can, of, of course you can. Very. Not with the suit on. Fashion. Can. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for joining us. Uh, you know, fresh socks every day. That's a good advice to, <laughs> to sleep with. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone. We'll see you back tomorrow for more EU LCS. Bye-bye. Unlock the lead. Of course, there's some of the patch notes on 814. Changes. Oh, look at this. Hunt Summer. Oh. What are you doing? Goes in. Oh. For the kill. Hunt Summer. That was beautiful. Unicorns of Love are running for their lives.
Yes, they got themselves a tower. Whirling Death flies oh! out. He manages to take down Totoro. There's no sadism available, but everybody's in the melee. Blood takes out Cadrill. Lambda Spike wasn't even used. That's simply not good enough. Promise Q gets killed as well. Rockcat destroy H2K. Oh no, the case kick is puts down on Lambs Respite once again. Steal back, look at him. He's the guy that has to carry Giants through. Jack Troll gobbles up his teammate, keeps him alive for the moment, but he will sacrifice himself and steal back. Giants now running for the hills because it's a 4v5. Kamashan flashed forward. Double kill though for Antenna onto the backline. He's gonna fall as well. No! They'll take the kills, they'll take your life, and they will take your Nexus in the end. G2, there's the TP. No. This is great oh, stuff no. from G2. Oh, oh. They're dead once again. It looks like G2 are well on their way back to their winning ways here. They're going to go 8 and 3 against Splice. Back towards his tower. New Duck cannot connect from the side. Whippo takes down upset. Bruxa takes down New Duck. Nom, 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 nom. Fnatic go from strength to strength to strength and look like the best team in the EU LCS.